warm welcome to everyone from the Global Forum community and our specially invited guests for this uh, session as well. It's uh, the seventh in a series of these virtual learning discussions. And uh, we've talked about several topics about transformation and very ex experiences from companies. Uh, this one is a part of that sub theme, transformation, except the touch here is also personal transformation. I wanted to say right away that Michael Hageman is in no relation to our previous discussant, Bonnie Hageman from the United States, who spoke about her book on vision. It's entitled Leading with Vision, the leader's blueprint for creating a compelling vision and engaging the workforce. We, I think we all enjoyed that. And that is available, as Michelin has suggested and mentioned, uh, recorded. So if you feel you'd like to go into that topic and see the slides that were used, you're more than welcome for that too. Well, as uh, I'm very delighted to, of course, uh, welcome Michael Hageman. Uh, every Global Forum always has a session, a panel session by authors from the Global Forum community. And you probably remember Michael in Paris from the 2019 24th annual Global Forum. And uh, then he spoke about his uh, German edition, German language edition of his book. And today, He'll talk about his English language book, which goes a little bit further and uh, which was just published this year in 2020. So it's very actual. Uh, yeah, Michael is a very special person and his background is very unusual for having already for 10 years been in charge of change and transformation at DPDHL, one of the largest logistics companies and one of the largest companies in the world. Some would say even the most global of all companies present in all 220 plus countries and territories around the world. Uh, with, a, with an employee, I think roughly, I think, Michael, if I'm not mistaken, about 550,000 people today. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. And in 2019, the annual revenue was something like 74 billion US dollars. So I'm very happy to also introduce Michael to you, for those who don't know him, because his background is so unusual and his approach is very distinct. Probably one of the best books I've ever seen on change and transformation, because it's fundamentally about values, about human values, about ethics, as well as the how-tos of transformation. In fact, there's even a toolkit in this book that may be particularly useful to many of, of you as well. So Michael, to my mind, is both, a, I would say, a reflective practitioner, an intellectual in his own right, and clearly someone who is always concerned about helping people and organizations around the world. And you won't be surprised if I tell you that his background follows this general thread of being helpful to everyone. He started out as a Catholic priest uh, for many years and then in charge of the academic international adult learning part of the Catholic church. He had what he said at that, uh, well, a little bit later, a kind of personal reorientation or what we would call a personal transformation and he decided to broaden out to be a consultant a learning consultant to many companies and of course to ngos and other organizations concerned about the transformation and change of people and creating organizations fit for people and fit for purpose then after this uh, brief interlude i guess he was tempted to go into the business world he took an mba and then became a member of the Deutsche Post DHO uh, team. And now, as I said, for 10 years now, personally experiencing and helping others go through personal and organizational transformation. I'll go into no more of the detail than that, Michael, to make sure you have more than enough time to enlighten us about your personal and also the business transformation that you have lived through and are now sharing. Thank you for being with us, Michael. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, Yuri. I'm always embarrassed when I get so much of praise uh, beforehand. So I would say, let's wait. And after the hour, then you can judge again <laughs> what it no is. No pressure. There's no uh, pressure. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, I believe everything is said about myself. And uh, I'm actually talking um, in the next couple of uh, 45 minutes perhaps and not only about the business transformation but as well about the uh, personal transformation because I believe that this is really 
uh, something uh, that concerns everybody. And uh, as Michelana, I think you're as well to you for the nice introduction mentioned already. Um, yeah, it would be good to have at least uh, by the end or at the end uh, a very vivid and interactive uh, discussion. It would be very good. I would be very delighted. Thank you. Okay, good. So, um, what is it? So, hopefully, you can all ski see the screen. Yeah, does it work? Just to check. Yeah, okay. Actually, very good. So, if you can hear me, I can see this. Okay, thank you. So, what we are talking to about uh, today about is so why transformation matters. And they're right at the beginning. I would like to uh, mention there's something. Uh, when I was talking previously to some people, they were saying, look, Michael, what is it you are talking about trends, about changes, about transformation? Uh, what, what is it actually? And I reviewed a little bit the, the, um, the definitions and I found that uh, what we call a mega trend is kind of a general direction in which something is developing, various changes rather make or become something different. And then the uh, actual Oxford Dictionary is saying about transformation, it's a complete change in the appearance of character of something or someone. So I believe there are a couple of overlaps that we are going to see here, but already right from the beginning on that, we know what we are talking about. Yeah, look for instance at the World Wide Web. To me, this is something. It's kind of. It used to be a mega trend, so it's always uh, it's already established. Um, but a change would be a change. How do you get information? So when I'm, for instance, talking at my son, ten years old, he recently he was asking, "Look, uh, Daddy, uh, what?" Because I told him, you know what, Google didn't exist uh, just a couple of years ago. Like. 20 years ago, Google didn't exist. And he was, what? Google didn't exist? But how did you get all your information? And I said, OK, there were something. We called it in previous times dictionary. And I show you something. Yeah, I have still a lot of dictionaries. And you know, this is just, it's, it's 10 years or 15 years, so it's, it's very fresh. Whereas when we talk about transformation, this is even something more, something bigger. And I take always the example of the phone. Yeah, it used to be a landline phone. And what was the phone for? The purpose of the phone was calling. Today, again, if I'm asking young people, so what do you have there in your hands? Nobody is telling me this is a device to talk to somebody or to, to ring up somebody, to, to phone somebody. No, no, what I have in my hand, oh, that's, that's, uh, that's a camera, that is something that is helping me organizing my life. I know where to eat, where to travel. I know how to pay, etc., etc. And this would be, for instance, an example uh, for a transformation. But I would like to ask you to do something differently, perhaps to, uh, to uh, previous forums. I would like to ask you to take a piece of paper and a pen now, because I would like to invite you to do a small self-assessment. So if you, if you don't have it, it would be nice just to get a, a pen and a piece of paper. Perhaps you, you need to uh, stand up and get it somewhere. A question in between, can we unmute the participants? Because I believe that some are very, oh yeah, I believe that's okay. Thank you very much. So once you got there, uh, the piece of paper and the pan, I would like to ask you a couple of questions about your personal agility between the scale one and five. So one meaning not at all, and five would be very much. And um, just, we are reading the sentences and you are just writing down question number one, and then you give your personal rating between one and five. So first question, if you are asked to do a job, you have never done before, you feel excited about the opportunity. Is it not at all or absolutely or something in between? Just write it down, something between one and five. And the same for the next question. The last time you were faced with a major change, professionally or personally, you felt stressed and worried about it. By the way, there's a human tendency always to say, I'm the king, I'm the best. And that's, that's just an overestimation of ourselves. Yeah? This is not only for leaders. You know the story, uh, if you ask leaders uh, what they think about their leadership, yeah? uh, more than 90%, 97% of all leaders say, I'm the best leader. If you ask the employees about their leaders, what do you think about the leadership? It's around how good they are. It's around uh, 30%, so it's huge gap. But that's not only for leaders. The third question, you are known for your sunny and happy disposition. 
Yeah, rather look at the half full than the half empty glass, as we say in Germany. I don't know if this is international saying. So the fourth one, you always make the most out of a negative situation and find good when others don't. Yeah, please think about something what was perhaps really bad. Yeah, you are coming to a hotel and it's full of spiders. Yeah, what is your reaction? Are you saying, wow, that's, that's very interesting. I'm in a zoo here, or what is your reaction? Number five, I'm exaggerating a little bit. Um, number five, you believe uh, there is something to be learned in from any experience. So it's is something really very deeply in yourself yeah, that you always can learn. Uh, I could tell you stories a lot, but we don't have so much time. So you sometimes struggle coping with and controlling your emotions. Yeah. If you are living with a partner, think of situations with a close one, because usually this is something where we are as we are. So we are not playing a role or something. Yeah? Seven, you approach all ideas with an open and intrigued mind. Uh, again, is it not at all, or is it fully, or is it something in between? Eight, you enjoy experimenting and experiencing new things. Is it rather a one or two, four, four, two, three, four, five? Question number nine, you often neglect the, neglect the basics of life, not enough sleep, not enough food, not enough self-development. Yeah, we call this basics of life. And question number 10, if it isn't broken, you don't think it should be fixed. Rather, not at all, or rather very much. So hopefully uh, this wasn't too fast. Um, so perhaps I can, I can only see a couple of you, uh, but I believe that most of you, yeah, you are done. Okay, yeah, thank you very much. And um, you are not getting the results now, you get them a little bit later, okay? Hopefully you are okay with that. Because what I would like to do now, we are coming back to this in a minute, talk about why does transformation matter? Yeah, and let's look a little bit at um, a couple of mega trends that we have that lead to bigger transformations. For instance, globalization, not very surprising, but uh, that the world becomes a small village. I believe there's so much of transformation in it. I was just today in the morning, I was reflecting about, uh, it was even my parents and grandparents, when they were starting a journey to, to a bigger city, like uh, 40 and 50 years ago, it was like a day long journey. And this was uh, very exciting. Yeah, uh, today it is, uh, where are you going to shopping? Are you flying to New York for the weekend? Or what are you doing during the weekend? Um, yeah, from us and for us in Germany, it used to be before COVID-19 yeah, from Germany to go shopping to London. Yeah, very interesting. It's like the, the neighborhood. Uh, digitalization, yeah, of course, very clearly we have already talked about this, yeah, this is transforming the overall environment. So, and to, just to take one thing, today we have job descriptions, yeah, digital job descriptions, where the job even didn't exist five years ago. This is absolutely interesting, I believe. Demographization, uh, we have an aging population, yeah, just 200 years ago, I've reviewed this, it was around 36 years, yeah, the life expectancy, currently I believe it's around 80. Um, the women are a little bit better off than men, I don't know exactly why, and the expectation in 40 years is already that it is more than 99.0 years. Climatization, I know that this is for some countries perhaps a little bit a political topic, so I don't want to uh, talk too much about this, but one thing is very clear, this is transforming our business, absolutely. So I'm talking about logistics, we are uh, talking about planes, about trucks and so on. This is massively important. Uh, and the last one, uh, I call it Covidization. I don't believe that this is English, but I have a copyright on this word, yeah. It's by Michael Hegemann, COVIDization. What do I mean by this? So COVID-19, I believe, increased the speed of, um, of transformation massively. And I would like to give you an example from our companies, so from DPDHL. By the way, I'm responsible for all change and transformational topics sitting in the, or being in the, in the, uh, in the center. 
so in Bonn is our uh, corporate center and um, yeah, being responsible for our major transformation. So what we have seen, uh, especially in the German market, but it was worthwhile, is um, a male decline yeah, by 50% within a couple of weeks. Yeah, 50% male decline. This used to be like, there used always to be a decline by 3%. Sometimes this was a very bad year. It was 4% decline. Yeah? And now within a couple of weeks, 50% yeah, decline. Whereas a parcel increase yeah, by more than 100%. Yeah? We used to have five to six million uh, parcels. This increased to more than 10 million parcels a day. Yeah? 10 million parcels a day. How do you cope with that was the question. And uh, what we have seen is we needed immediately to hire more than 10,000 people. Yeah, this is a question of transformation. How are you doing this when the frontiers are closed? Yeah, there is, you, you cannot fly them in. You, you, can, you can't even drive them in from, from Eastern countries. Yeah, this is kind of really a, a transformation where we really needed to look at uh, what we expected, where we expected to be in three years, that it is already now coming within a couple of weeks or months. I would like to uh, share with you this famous, did you know, uh, you can find it uh, elsewhere as well. Uh, we adapted it a little bit. Uh, please have a look at that. Um, actually, the interesting thing about this film, and perhaps you have uh, discovered this here and here, uh, here and there, that some of the content is already outdated. 
and uh, on purpose I have left this in because um, it used to be outdated like every every four years every two years so for instance that Facebook if Facebook would be a country it was just a couple of years that it would be the third biggest it is now since a year or since two years already it is or would be the biggest country in the world yeah or I have looked at another uh, number yeah the number of monthly Facebook users it was like 800 something million yeah if you look at this yeah that's really interesting I've reviewed the numbers for uh, the current quarter or the, the previous quarter 2020 yeah more than two and a half billion yeah they, uh, that is really so for me these are all signs I mean all signs of transformation and perhaps we we got used to it we are saying yeah but this is this is normal we don't look at this but from time to time i believe that's really important uh, to look at this and one other thing is where we can see how the fast the world is changing and transforming is the world uncertainty index yeah where you can really there's a measurement behind it a lot of people are um, questioned uh, and assessed and there you can really see yeah that people feel more and more uncertain which leads to um, to other crises as well but here at this uh, presentation um, I'm not talking about this uh, so much as you know uncertainty is part of VUCA and VUCA was was already a part I believe in one of the previous sessions so I don't want to talk so much about it that just about something that you perhaps uh, don't know or not I'm not aware so much about that it is VUCA 1 and VUCA 2 because if we see VUCA yeah, what are we doing with this is a question what are we doing with the volatile world yeah and the answer is we need to come up with a vision yeah what is about the uncertainty and uh, what is with complexity with ambiguity and this is really something where and I'm coming to that with a couple of examples where we have possibilities yeah, to design and, and form the world, to do something with these kind of transformational challenges. But before we come to uh, some solutions, I would like to uh, tell you another story. This is uh, in regards to Moore's uh, law. Perhaps you have heard of that. Um, uh, there was a, a wise man and he has done something for a king, something um, very important. And the answer from the king was, what can I do for you or uh, what do you wish for? And what he said is, I just wish for a rice grain and please put it in the first core of a chessboard. And then in the second one, you just put the double and then the third again, the double and so forth uh, and so forth. Yeah. And the king was kind of laughing and saying, oh, what a silly wise man, what's that? So um, the last square, yeah, uh, there are more than 2 billion rice grains already in it. And if you would do this for the overall chessboard, it's around 18 uh, quintillion. If you would put one rice grain on the other, this would be higher. Uh, than the highest mountain of the world, the Mount Everest. Uh, what is it telling us? The Moore's law is saying that every 18 months, uh, IT performance is duplica duplicating. So starting from 1950s, so from the, when the first computers were uh, developed. And of course, this was, and those of us, they are perhaps a little bit, a little bit older than others, only a little bit, uh, they know this, how this used to be. So I remember from my father, who, is in, uh, who was an engineer, is that already, uh, that there was a computer, and the computer was like three times, two times five meters. So this was the computer. And um, uh, that's very interesting how you see that uh, um, the, the time uh, of duplication that is really accelerating. To give you another example, yeah, have a look at Apollo 11. This was just 50 years ago. I mean, what is 50 years? Yeah, if you look at uh, the time between 720 and 770 uh, in terms of uh, transformation, what 
was there so much? I mean, I, I wasn't born at this time, yeah, but everything what we know from, uh, from our, so from the history, and uh, so this is, there just, there was not so much, yeah? And if you look here, so for instance, the bits memory from uh, 32,000, and uh, if you look at an iPhone, this is um, more than 34 billion. This is just very interesting and shows um, why transformation matters. And I was asked as well to look a little bit into the future and uh, what you can see is there what we expect, how this will be even more, more transformations in the future. It is, uh, one is the shifting economic power, so from west to east, we can observe this already now. And um, I believe that there will be coming uh, way more than we can, um, that most people envision currently, than the resource scarcity. I mean, many people, they live as oil was uh, never ending. We know that this is not right. Uh, technology, yeah, all the automation of humanity. Um, so for instance, in Japan, there are already robots that uh, tend a patient. Yeah, this is it's already there. This is, we have ever thought, uh, oh no, this will never be possible or that robots, uh, robots that they can read our, our facial expressions because we always said, oh no, this is something only humans can. Yeah, wrong. Robots can do this. And uh, that, that robots become our best friends. It's as very interesting. I recently was with a friend and they were, we were um, it was before summertime and it was a little bit cold. And then we said in this apartment, oh, it was uh, yeah, kind of a little bit cold. And then um, uh, then he said, uh, heating a bit higher. And they said, oh, your girlfriend is here as well. I, I, I didn't see her. Uh, that's, that's interesting. No, no, my, my girlfriend isn't here. And then I said, okay, um, my dear friend, you are talking to things. Is everything okay with you? Yeah. And then, of course, yeah, there is, uh, he, he has an absolutely smart home talking to the heating and heating higher, then the heating is becoming higher. And so on, just as an example, uh, five years ago, I would say, and even today, yeah, if I share this with some people, they say, ah, you are crazy, that's, that's not right. Humanization in regards to uh, smart cities. Um, yeah, I, I just would like to take one example out of that because I believe that there is one mega trend in regards to new work, um, that we don't live to work anymore and we don't work to live, but we just live and work. And this is a transformation. This is a big transformation. And I believe that we are still not, not really clear how this really looks like. So with COVID-19, we had already an idea uh, how this could look like, but this is just just the beginning, just the beginning. How are we going to deal with all of that? So now we are coming to the key success factors uh, of the business transformation. And uh, when we prepared this session, so I, I had this part very, very big, and then we said, look, you can all, you can read this up in, in the book, and this is, um, I believe it's interesting, but uh, I don't just want to read it out because you can you can read it there. Uh, I would rather uh, share a couple of experiences. So the first experience is for all of the transformations, yeah, business transformation, personal transformation, humans are key and they are very much key. And still often what I observe in our company, but as well, I'm, I'm as well talking to many other companies, companies as well, this is totally underestimated. Yeah? And this is something we need to take humans into the center of everything. Yeah? This is absolutely important. Um, think about successful or unsuccessful changes or even transformations, yeah? What were the crucial factors, yeah? Perhaps I give you a couple of seconds, think of some, something, perhaps a recent change. The structure of MIC, yeah, Mindset Infrastructure Capability, it's just, it's a very um, easy, very easy structure and um, uh, this is really on purpose. So we, we had a, uh, a CEO, he's retiring, um, um, I believe in the, in the close future, and he always introduced uh, the topic of simplification. So make it really easy, ask easy questions. If there is a change, a transformation, 
what are we doing with the mindset? How do people think? What do they want to? Um, how do we motivate them in terms of capabilities? Are they able to do what they should be doing? And do we have the right infrastructure to support it? And I'm coming in a minute uh, to that. So it's like you all know, uh, most probably Simon Sinek uh, always start with the why. It's a simple concept, uh, but this makes it shining. And this is similar with the MIC concept. So roughly going through it, mindset means ask the questions, what, why, where, who? This is all important for every uh, business transformation. We need to ask those questions. For the infrastructure part, we need to work on the physical IT process measurement reward organization. Um, sounds like theory. I'm explaining it in a minute with a practical example. And the same for capability. Are people able and how can they learn? So the topic of learning is so important. And this is why I like Yuri as a person, but as well uh, the Global Forum, because this is about learning and this will be even more important than that we can imagine today. Now, this is absolutely clear. It's lifelong learning. And the good message is the brain plasticity tells us we are able to learn. So even when we are in the future are becoming 110 and 120 years old. I, will, I would like to share um, a transformation that we had which, which was unsuccessful and I'm applying the MIC structure on it. So we have not been involved, fortunately, uh, in hindsight, fortunately, uh, but uh, afterwards we had a look at this. So what were the reasons why did it, why it failed? Yeah? Why did it fail? And um, so this was, this is as well known in the, in the press, so I'm as well uh, so welcome my UPS colleagues, uh, so this is all well known, so I can share this here as well. One thing is from the mindset perspective, there were at the top, there were the managers, the leaders, there was really the mindset and some of them uh, expressed it verbally, we don't have any failures. So at the beginning I was talking to the leader of them and uh, I wanted to say, uh, look, uh, if I'm looking at bigger transformations, many of them, they tend to fail. I, do, do you know this? And the answer was, I will never fail. Uh, two years later, she was out because this was all done. Um, so the other thing was from an infrastructure perspective, they were doing everything at the same time. So you can understand this. Yeah, perhaps it's a big bang approach. Yeah, but this didn't work. And they had some feedback circles. So people were giving feedback, but this was going to the uh, corporate headquarters and was disappearing somewhere. Yeah, and nobody did listen to oh, what's that feedback? No, we don't need this. Yeah, so they actually, they didn't learn. Costs one billion. So uh, no one has seen this, right? Uh, so, and that now the uh, successful example we have been involved and actually I've uh, talked to our uh, CEO, so to uh, Dr. Frank Apple uh, at this because he has asked me to support this knowing the, the old transformation that went wrong and said, Michael, what can we do about this? And I've proposed him to uh, take the MIC methodology and uh, just apply this, yeah? And we have done this. So first important thing was the role modeling of the CEO, all leaders involved from the top. At this time, Frank himself, uh, he has led this big business unit. It was around a business unit with uh, 200,000 people and leading a transformation for 200,000 people. That's uh, not something that you, you do as a, on a side track. <laughs> yeah, so this was really, was, was kind of really an important thing. So, and then I told him, Frank, we only do this if I get the agreement from yourself and all the top management, and then we go through it. We are in a hierarchical, situa um, hierarchical uh, organization. Uh, like, I mean, others, they have only, um, 20,000 people, this is, from our perspective, this is small, we, we have 60,000 managers. So it's really, it's a, it's a big, really a big one, yeah? But this means we want that everybody, like at least 80% from the top is role modeling what we want to see. Then we want to measure it, changing the leadership culture. How do you change a leadership culture? You know, usually people tell you, uh, you will need 10 years. Um, they ask me, do you need more than three months? Yeah, I said, look, a little bit more perhaps. Yeah? So this means you need one crucial thing yeah, 
what you could do and what we have chosen is uh, the introduction of feedback and to measure it. Yeah? So everybody who has given to a manager or to his employees um, a feedback uh, needed to put this in on an iShare and we have measured this. This was after a certain time was more than 15,000 was really impressive uh, figures and a, a real comprehensive training program. Yeah, and all of that yeah, led to uh, really a huge transformation in products in the processes without any loss. So it like an, what we call it in, in German, we, we say an operation with open heart on the open heart. I don't know if this is English, but uh, so it's like uh, the running, the never change a running system. No, that's wrong. Yeah, we needed to change a running system, thereby introducing a lead, new leadership culture. And this led as well to a massive productivity growth. But what we saw as well is that the business transformation is very closely linked to personal transformation. And therefore, I would like to talk a little bit about this. So, and there, let's see why is change so still so hard on us? So what's the reason there? So it's around like 40% um, on, of our personality, um, depends on genetic or epigenetic uh, factors. And there it just can be that it is in my genes that I'm, I don't want to change. Yeah? This is just there. Or you know, you know this uh, fight, flight or freeze responses, um, re responses that were very important like a couple of 10,000 years ago because uh, this was saving our lives. So, um, and today it is like, uh, as well, it creates stress if he uh, feels that he needs to change yeah, because of this, this is really come our um, uh, pre-descendants. And then we have the last thing is, um, yes, we have the brain plasticity. I was already talking about this, but you know, our brain is a very effective energy system. So, um, I've, I've studied as well a lot about uh, neurobiology biology, because I, I really like this um, and this shows us a lot. And our brain, I, I always say, creates the highest output with the low, lowest input. Yeah? And how is our brain doing this? Very simply said, yeah, it is by establishing routines, yeah, because our synapses are building, I call this always a highway, in German it's uh, Autobahn, yeah, a highway, which means this is something, it's a routine, because the more, the, the, the stronger the routine is, the less the brain needs to work for it. So today, so for instance, in the morning, if you're going to brush your teeth, if you would have to decide every day, should I brush my teeth or not? Yeah, this creates, you need more energy. Or if it's just a routine, then you just do it. But this means on the other hand, if you're going to change that, yeah, that this is not so easy. So from a different perspective, um, uh, the, the, when changes or and then huge changes in terms of bigger transformations are coming to us, yeah, then if you are not so much an agile person, then immediately we would like feel as a victim. And this is from a human perspective, this is always very, very difficult for us. Because um, what is important to come from a, a victim to someone who is making the change, who is deciding yeah, who is saying, look, this is now what I am doing. This is as well from, um, I've studied as well uh, psychology. And this is from a, from a psycholo psychological view, uh, absolutely, um, absolutely important. And um, I would like to give you two examples for myself. Yeah, one not so good and one better example. Um, oh, unfortunately it is not here because it comes, uh, I believe it comes later. Um, then uh, I go ahead with this one. The answer is uh, how you are dealing with this. Uh, there is a, a concept from uh, Professor Van Damme, uh, who is professor in the Netherlands, uh, what she calls uh, individual change adaptability. And there's a cognitive, effective, and behavioral adaptability. And uh, I just quickly go through it. It's, um, so question again, how are we dealing with this individual bigger transformations? How can we transform our life? 
So the cognitive response to that is be aware of a same change situation, for instance, or uh, take something, just consider a new idea, yeah? get to flexible thinking, etc. From an effective point of view, um, there's a concept of resilience. And from the behavior uh, point of view, there are a lot of adaptive skills. The good message here is actually um, we can learn it. Yeah? This is really a very good message. Um, so if you want to become more adaptive, yeah, from a personal view, then there are these three areas and there are tons, very tons of, um, of activities that you can do. And by this, if you know how to do this, then you can really um, change your personality. And I've recently, I've talked to our uh, CHRO, I believe, so the, 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 the boss of all the employees, so a member of the board, and, and he has called me for, for a couple of things and then we have talked about this and I've told him, look, uh, Thomas, I believe that we need something to strengthen our change muscle. And then he immediately say, okay, can you build a course? So, and, and we have just a couple of weeks ago, we have built a course around it, how you learn this. So for everybody who wants to strengthen the change muscle, yeah, because this is, it's normal. So if I want to strengthen my muscles, I start swimming or I go to the gym or something. Yeah, why wouldn't we do this for the change muscle as well? And the individual change muscle to survive in the future for our business, but for personal life, not to become a victim because this is absolutely no solution because this is, this is not uh, the way of life. Yeah, we need, I believe really, we need to develop this personal change muscle and this is the way. This is really a proof, I've proven it myself, we have proven this already with a couple of people. This is really to, uh, the way how to develop the individual change muscle. Just here are now the two examples. One negative example, I was the victim of a restructuring um, a couple of years ago. It was from international to national. I never wanted to go to HR because I thought HR is very boring. Sorry for everybody who is working in HR. Uh, but this was really, this took me a time really to personally to go through it. Um, fortunately, I had learned, uh, learned a couple of uh, activities how to do this. And then I've seen recently with the global pandemic, so within a weekend, I needed to change myself, my, uh, my smaller team, my bigger team, our business unit, and so on. And this really uh, was possible with uh, smaller exercises um, um, that I was uh, um, applying for myself and as well for the others. So I would like to ask you now to come back to your piece of paper that hopefully you filled out with uh, 10 questions. Um, because here is now the solution. You can see now how agile you are. Um, yeah, please uh, have a reference to it. Uh, some of them uh, of the questions are inverse questions. So sometimes the one is good, sometimes the five is good. Uh, just have a, have a quickly have a quick view uh, on that and perhaps uh, you can mark one or two where you are uh, already seeing that you are actually very good that you are perhaps outstanding yeah that you are very strong and perhaps two others where you would see oh there is perhaps something uh, where I could work with or work on yeah again this is for sure not an encompassing so overall um, assessment that would uh, tackle all the different questions. It's, it's uh, more a trigger of thought and, and something to excite you and uh, hopefully to motivate you to say, look, to be agile, personal uh, agile, um, and to boost this personal agility in my environment so I'm, for instance, I'm doing this with my uh, kids as well. They are very, very resistant yeah? <laughs> to change in the morning <laughs> the cereal, yeah, not from sugar to uh, honey or to something else. Yeah, I get a big, big uh, resistance. Uh, but I still try uh, to apply the certain techniques if you want. Um, okay, so um, 
the question is uh, how to increase your agility. So if you want to increase now your personal agility, because this really belongs to uh, and relates to the business as well, how can you do this? And I have three proposals, three gifts for you. We have overall, I believe it's like more than 120 different exercises and so on. And I don't want to bore you, I just uh, have three. So the first one is, um, the uh, tiny habit uh, habit concept, perhaps you know Brian Jeffrey Fock, uh, who is a professor as well in, um, where is he in, uh, again, in Stanford, I believe, in Stanford. Um, and uh, this is actually very interesting uh, because perhaps you have experienced how difficult it is to even to uh, create a, a smaller uh, change. And if there's a bigger transformation, how to transform your life. For instance, let's say from an unhealthy to a more healthy situation. And the discovery here is yeah, that you take an existing behavior and to the existing behavior, you add a tiny, smaller other behavior. So, for example, if you want to lose weight, yeah, you start by doing two push-ups each time you use the bathroom. Yeah, um, just just try it. Take take this and and try it. Try it and do this not less than twenty-one days in a row. So, because this is the minimum of time that our brain uh, needs that a small, it's, it's not that strong there, but it is already a smaller habit, but this is, that this is already established. So if you want it, and I really invite you to, to, to play with it and to, to just to do it, yeah, whatever your smaller routine is. Yeah? I have done this um, recently, uh, I'm, I'm a musician as well, so playing organ, guitar, and, and uh, I've even produced a couple of CDs and written a musical a couple of years ago. And uh, I wanted to play more piano. I'm playing uh, piano as well. And uh, I've lost it a little bit, yeah. And then I said, so whenever I'm entering the house, I'm playing for five minutes piano, yeah. I don't play every day two hours yeah, because I don't have time for it, yeah. This worked out, yeah. This is really, really a very interesting concept. The second gift for you, yeah, uh, the gratitude journal. I mean, everybody who is into those concepts of uh, mindfulness, etc., most probably knows of that. I would like to share only one important, very important thing from a, a transformational perspective and how to stick to your behavior. This is don't do it every day because many of the people that are uh, throwing it in the market, yeah, they're saying every day, every evening, write it down. Yeah? This, so there are a lot of researches uh, around that, a lot of I have the studies um, there. Uh, do it around three times in a week, three times in a week, not more, but then write it down. What does this do? Yeah, it helps to change your mindset to a positive mindset. Mindset. What does a positive mindset do? It rather looks at transformations and smaller changes that are coming on you as opportunities because you just have a different view on it. A small thing, but very powerful. And the third one, this is as well, um, it's a final gift here, uh, a very simple tool. Yeah, whenever there is something, a sense change situation, something that is bad, something that you, know, you are worried about, so something that is uh, painful, uh, so even physically painful, yeah, uh, take a distance to that, yeah, and ask yourself rather, what is the pain teaching me than just, I don't want it, I don't want it, because our normal reaction is that we are running from it. And the point here is that I'm rather that I'm uh, saying, look, the pain or the situation, what it is, I put it somewhere and I'm going in, the, uh, in a kind of discussion. What are you telling me? Yeah? And they're many, making a learning uh, experience out of it. So this was just um, a, uh, the, the small uh, uh, 
um, a small gift. And as I said at the beginning, I wanted to talk about the overall why transformation matters, why it belongs to each other. So the business transformation, and we are talking about the key success factors of business transformation. And again, you can, if you are interested in details, you can all read it. I've shared a couple of examples, business examples of this, then how this is linked to the personal transformation because it really, really belongs together. And more and more, I believe, uh, and I see this in, in all the companies, yeah, that they are really starting this, uh, we call it change agility, but the, this personal change or personal transformational journeys, how to do this with your employees. And uh, yeah, at the beginning, some smaller uh, gifts for you. And I'm very interested in uh, getting uh, your feedback, but as well in an open discussion. And if there is any, any learning, we have so much of so many people, so much of knowledge here, so many knowledgeable people. If there is anything else, please throw it here uh, and let's discuss. And uh, thank you very much that you listened to me. Yeah, thank you very much, Michael. We are at 45 minutes almost of the entire hour that we have with you. Thank you so much for those insights. And I see that if you'd like to ask a question, uh, please either raise your hand or put it into the chat. And I see it's on a first come first served basis. And Dan Nornberg from Germany, one of our previous presenters on the valid discussions a few months back, he has the first question. Go ahead, please, Dan. Just a second, I'm coming back. Well, I, by the way, Michael, I love the uh, gratitude journal that you shared. Uh, that was fantastic. And uh, the, the rest of the audience doesn't know, but we had a wonderful, Michael and I had a wonderful conversation last week when he was yes. going down the Autobahn at about 200 kilometers an hour. Uh, you know, <laughs> so it's, it's just amazing. And I said, can you, can, you, can you drive and talk at the same time? And he said, you mean I should drive faster? I said, no. <laughs> But uh, Michael, here, here's my question. Here's my question. Um, I mean, you know that I'm, um, to, for lack of a better word, I'm, a, I'm obsessed with um, this, um, the organizational unit as the executive team and the strategic leadership team. That's my focus of analysis. And my feeling is, is that um, most of the time when we talk about change and transformation, uh, we often talk about it on either an individual basis or an organizational wide basis. And I just wanted to know, have you and your group, group done any experiments to see how could you use you know, senior leadership teams to become both the masters of transformation and then to become the mentors and multipliers? So you know, initiatives really specifically designed almost like set learning for, for these senior teams. So what, what's been your, your experience or your thoughts on that? Yes. So there are, um, we have really some good experiences in our company with that. So I'm, I'm not responsible for that. So there's, there's, that's a different department and somebody else is, um, is responsible for it. Uh, but this is, uh, so thank you for that. This is really a facet that I was not talking so much about this. So not only the uh, individual and organization, but as well in teams and groups. I believe that this, we just need to complement um, this. Um, and, and actually, I believe that's, uh, that's uh, even necessary. Yeah, that's really necessary uh, to integrate this. And um, because this makes it really stronger, it's not only the one individual, but as well looking at the overall group. So I can only, only support this and say, yes, yes, we have there some experiences. I recently came across of um, um, uh, Simon Sinek again. Uh, he shared a, a story uh, because he was, um, he was asked by a company uh, to set up a new training program. And then his answer was, look, I could do this the old fashioned way, but I'm not doing this. The way how I am doing this is I'm setting up uh, the first pre-training day. It takes place on a Saturday. Yeah. And you do this on your leisure time. Yeah. And we invite uh, managers just voluntarily who is interested, who wants to come. Yeah, and then we ask them to voluntarily uh, contribute and, and that they together with us set the overall training program that they set it up. 
Yeah, that's a very good idea, I believe. And from the around uh, 100 uh, people that were invited, 20, 25 showed up. And the funny thing was that he even said, okay, there were still a couple of people that are there, that were there because they believed they needed to be there. Yeah, but most of them, like 90, 95% of them were really, they are very much engaged. And after that, they said um, they really wanted to contribute, yeah, without more money, with spending even private time. But they were asking, can I please contribute to that? Yeah, and I found this very interesting and uh, I can only say, and, and with your, uh, what you have written in your book as well, Dan, this is uh, absolutely, everybody needs to read this. This is, um, it's very good and yeah, let's, let's integrate this there, yeah. very important. I would say thanks for showing that example. I'm gonna look for that now and I think what you've described, and I'll, you know, you, you basically Simon created a, an atmosphere, an invitation for ownership. Yeah, yeah. He, he invited the people to come on Saturday, and if you went, then you you owned that, um, yeah. and that's a that's a great. Thanks for sharing that. I, I wasn't familiar with that with that example, and I I appreciate that. So thanks yeah. for the for the insight. Yeah. Well, oh, we're, I'm watching the time here too, Michelina. How are we on the time? Since you're the boss here, tell us. Are we getting close, or do you want me to summarize, or do can we take I, I a few think, more I questions? We, uh, so I think we'll move to to summaries, and we just want to be mindful of our. Uh, uh, our time boundary here. So we're at 57 minutes of the hour. So please okay. go ahead. I, I will summarize extremely quickly. So uh, as I wrote to, in my forward to your book, your English language book, Michael, I think we've seen here something really special. Uh, for example, even on the discussion about mindset, I wrote that you incorporating purpose, spirit, soul, and intellect. And we've rarely seen that where values are at the foundation of every transformation, be it personal, or organizational. I wanted to thank you for that. I know we didn't have too much time to talk about that important piece, mm -hmm. but please stay tuned for further discussions and I'm sure Michael will be joining us. And if you have any further questions, I guess Michelina, you'll explain how that can be done. So on behalf of everyone, Michael, I'd like to thank you. Thank you for all the participants. Thank you for speaking to our UPS special guest today, for speaking with people from India and all around the world in our yeah, community of practice. Thank you. Thank you. Michelina, it's all back to you. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Yes. Uh, uh, thank you so much, Michael. Uh, you know, I, I definitely, you know, that the takeaway, you know, in how to increase your agility. And I love that you gave, uh, uh, you know, things that we can practice. So uh, tiny habits, gratitude journal, reframing. So just something very tangible that we can hold on to and walk off with some great new practices. Um, on behalf of the Valet team, thank you, Michael. Thank you so much for everyone for joining us today. Please be sure to check your the uh, Global Forum website as well as your email about the upcoming presentations. Uh, and just to kind of put in your mind, they'll be the third Thursday of each month uh, throughout this uh, calendar year. But coming up next month, we'll have Karen Hanna, who I saw is on our session today. Um, she'll be discussing her new book, Talent Trouble, How Leaders Can Quickly Harness Trouble and Unleash Talent to Deliver Results. Uh, in November, I'll be giving uh, a talk called Hacking the Future, Learning and Instruction in the Area of COVID-19 and uh, Implications for the Future. And for those of you who are uh, uh, know anything about MIT, we're all about hacking. And um, finally, we'll have, uh, Yuri will give in December our year in review, uh, as well as looking ahead, what we can expect. So, um, so thank you so much again. A reminder that the session has been recorded. And anyone that's registered for the session will receive uh, my, the, the slides that Michael has shared as well as the recording. And um, if you have any feedback for us, please feel free to be in touch. You can reach out to us individually or again, valid at globalexecutivelearning.com. On behalf of the Virtual Action Learning International Discussion Team, uh, Carla, Chantal, Yuri, and myself, we'd like to thank you for joining us today and look forward to seeing you again at a future presentation.